name's James Buscard and I'm the president of Nevada Exploration. And for those of you that don't know about our story yet, uh, we're a team of proven Nevada explorers and we're applying new exploration technology specifically to look for new tier one Carlin type deposits hidden under cover in Nevada's valleys. With this technology today, we're advancing a portfolio of three new district scale targets. We have a market cap of just north of $30 million and we have very high insider ownership. On the ground, our team's led by Wade Hodges. Wade was Santa Fe's senior exploration geologist up until its merger with Newmont. And during that time, Wade and his team discovered 30 million ounces of gold in Nevada. And what they understood was their discovery rates were beginning to fall. And ultimately that was the genesis of what today has become Nevada exploration. At the board level, we're fortunate to have some terrific uh, technical oversight by our uh, Dr. John Larson. Uh, John was BHP's global porphyry copper exploration manager. And, and as we'll discuss shortly, BHP has been a leader in uh, exploring undercover. And lastly, uh, in 2019, we welcomed a new technical advisor, a uh, gentleman by the name of Simon Griffiths. And Simon was Barrick's global chief geochemist at a time when Barrick was discovering and developing Gold Rush. And Gold Rush is at the north end of an area called Grass Valley, which we're gonna spend some time looking at today. Now there's a lot of focus on Nevada right now. There's an entire panels uh, discussion happening as well today. And, and that's for good reason. With 100,000 map prospects and 600 gold mines, there's nowhere on the planet that produces so much gold every year uh, by area. Uh, for comparison, at about five and a half million ounces, Nevada produces as much gold as all of Canada. Now, what needs to be highlighted though is the vast majority of these ounces come from only one type of deposit. Nevada's Carlin type gold deposits with a combined endowment of about 250 million ounces represent one of only six gold belts in the entire world of that size. What also needs to be highlighted though is of these Carlin ounces, 80% of them come from only three camps. It's Carlin, Cortez, and Getchell. Everything else in Nevada is relatively insignificant compared to these three main camps. Now they're so important, there's been a lot of research to understand what, uh, what made them. And they're very similar in terms of their geologic architecture. They're each made up of large regional structures cutting through reactive carbonate host rocks, which we call lower plate, camped up against major intrusives. And the intrusives are important because they make these already favorable host rocks even better. Now, what you see at all three of these camps is these favorable architectures have then been exploited by massive hydrothermal systems. We're talking alteration in geochemistry over tens of cubic kilometers of bedrock. They're huge. So if we want to go out and find another Cortez or we want to find another Carlin, what we need to find are mineral systems of this sort of scale. So we need to keep that in mind as we continue here. Despite how much we know about these systems, though, we're not doing a very good job of finding them. After peaking in the late 90s, Nevada's gold production has fallen 40% in the last 20 years. Now the challenge that we face in Nevada is the same challenge that we face in mature districts all over the world. And what that is is, the areas that are left to explore are vast areas where the bedrock is covered by sand, gravel, and other things that make it difficult to see the bedrock. What that means is the tools that we've previously used in these exposed settings don't work where we can't see the rocks. What's exciting though is that what we have in all these mature districts, we have bigger areas under cover yet to explore than all of the areas that we've already seen. So unquestionably, this is the future. Companies like BHP already get this. BHP is spending 85% spending of their global exploration budget looking undercover. The question is, what does this opportunity look like in Nevada and how do we go about exploiting it? The consensus is that in Nevada, there's 200 plus million ounces waiting to be found in these basins. And as we're gonna talk about, we believe the secret to finding these ounces is, is looking at the groundwater. Compared to 20 years ago, what we have are much better analytical tools. And what that means is we're, allow, we're, we're able to do is detect gold in sampling mediums that were not available to us before. What's particularly helpful about groundwater is that it moves. 
And what we find in groundwater are footprints that are 10 times bigger than what we find in bedrock. And when we have 10 times bigger footprints, we can find them with 10 times fewer drill holes. We add to that the cost to drill a hole to collect a groundwater sample is about one one hundredth of the cost of drilling a conventional borehole. So when you need 10 times fewer samples and they're one one hundredth the cost to drill, what we have is a radical increase in the amount of area that we can explore with our exploration budgets. And what that allows us to do now is be systematic as we go into these covered settings for the first time. Groundwater chemistry is so powerful, it's being used all over the world to look undercover. Uh, but what differentiates what we're doing in Nevada versus all these other programs around the world is rather than relying on existing wells, on existing boreholes, springs, windmills, and the like, what we've developed is equipment that allows us to co collect groundwater samples wherever we want. In this photo here, we're collecting groundwater samples immediately south of Cortez. This is one of the world's largest and most profitable gold mines. And we're exploring in an area that's completely open because no one else has the tools to be systematic in terms of identifying and advancing new targets in such a covered environment. With that equipment, we've now completed the world's largest hydrogeochemistry sampling program. More than 6,000 samples uh, focused in north central Nevada looking for new Carlin deposits. We've tested around 30 known gold mines. And using that data, we've now identified a portfolio of new targets three of which we now control and we're advancing. Those are the Kelly Creek, Grass Valley, and South Grass Valley. Uh, to get an idea of how this works, we're gonna zoom in here to Grass Valley. It's a covered search space, about 500 square kilometers in a good part of the state, a, lo a logical place to begin an undercover exploration program. With our equipment, we complete a regularized program. In this case, we found two places with high concentration of gold. And because these basins are completely open, we're able to stake the claims and own these projects 100%. Once we have a project like South of Grass Valley that becomes fairly conventional, uh, we begin to integrate uh, geophysics, in this case, airborne magnetics, gravity, more uh, geochemistry, soil geochemistry, tighter groundwater sampling. Uh, very important, look at the surrounding range front. And ultimately, it's time for stratigraphic drill holes. This autumn, we completed a 10-hole stratigraphic uh, test program over uh, nearly four kilometers of the project. And what we've been very exciting to share is uh, in, in November, we've shared all this data is with these drill holes, we're able to orient the geophysics, orient our mapping, integrate the geochemistry, and for the first time confirm that what we have here based on a now comprehensive geologic model is the classic Carlin architecture, lower plate host rocks, uh, cut up by major structures up against a major intrusive. And most importantly, what we're seeing is this architecture has been exploited by a massive Carlin mineral system. We've got alteration, intense solidification, uh, multi-phase sulfide oxide mineralization, gold, Carlin type pathfinders, all of this over an area more than three and a half kilometers in strike and open in all directions and at depth. What we're doing with this model now is we get to drape the geochemistry, we drape the groundwater chemistry over a geologic model and identify specific places where we have uh, architectural and geologic conditions known to host mineralization in the other three major camp with geochemistry support in multiple sampling mediums. Uh, last week began our follow-up drilling program at each of these targets and we've outlined clear objectives for what we need to see at each of these targets to continue. Now, as we put these targets back together and look at the project as a whole, what's important to point out is while there are other projects in Nevada that might check some of the same Carlin type um, mineral system boxes, what really differentiates South Grass Valley is the size of the system. The three and a half kilometers of alteration in geochemistry in the bedrock, eight kilometers of geochemistry in the soils and the groundwater. What we've defined here, what we've discovered here is a mineral system of an equivalent size to the North Carlin trend. Now, after tens of thousands of drill holes, we know that this large mineral system contains more than 80 million ounces of gold. That's the size of mineral system we set the company up to look for. That's the size of the system that we found. And as, as I said, it's been uh, an exciting last few months to be able to share these results. Now, what we have to end with is not only have we found an important new Carlin style mineral system, what we've demonstrated is what we're able to do using groundwater chemistry is find this size and this quality of target in a place that looks like this, in a place all we began with was collecting a groundwater sample. So it's been a, an incredibly important milestone for the project. It's been an incredibly important milestone for our work program. 
Uh, we began our follow-up drilling program last week. Uh, the guys are going two crews, 24 hours a day. And over the coming months, it's going to be exciting to continue to share uh, the drilling results as we move forward.